Now in this video, we will start discussing about centrifugal compressor. A centrifugal compressor is drastically different in construction from the reciprocating compressor. Even a slightest change in its pressure ratio can bring about a very considerable change in the output and the efficiency of the compressor. Okay. Now there are very less number of moving parts. It is an oil free compressor. There is no oil discharge in the air. So whenever you want a continuous supply of air discharge with oil less delivery, we always use this. Now there are some rotating parts. There are some bearings used. So whatever lubrication is necessary for the uh, you know bearings of the shafts or whatever moving parts that oil housing is separate from the air part so air side and oil side they're separate with some uh, bump seals so those seals they separate the two sides okay so let's look at a very simplistic construction of this compressor on this uh, you know board so the major components of the pump are the very first the, the very first uh, component which is very evident from the outside is this spiral casing. So this is also known as involute casing. Involute casing. Okay. Then we will go from outside to inside. So this entire involute casing is used to collect the uh, you can say air and then it is discharged. So this is the discharge to the receiver. Right. Now let's go to the inside. So you have seen uh, the involute casing. Now let's let's have a look at this much part. So this plate, this much part, this part is called the diffuser ring. So this is the diffuser ring. We'll discuss the the use of each of these parts in detail one by one. So after diffuser rings, you have this impeller, which is the inner ring impeller okay and on impellers you have these blades or they are also called veins okay now i've just drawn the impeller over here so this is the impeller on the on this side of the board so the shaft the pump shaft on this pump shaft you have the impeller housing okay so this is the impeller this is what it looks like and these things are the blades so this is a blade so this is one blade this is the second blade and so on and so forth now the this 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 part of the uh, impeller so this is the eye of the impeller eye of impeller okay so this is where that is the eye where the air enters in the axial direction so this is a very important thing to remember and understand that in this kind of a compressor air enters axially air enters axially okay so this is how the air will enter it will move over the blades or the veins okay and it will exit the air exits radially so this is how the air will exit okay now let, let's go through it step by step air enters through eye axially and then air enters radially after radial exit these blue colored arrows they go into the diffuser ring okay so you have the in inlet to the eye then from eye we go to the impeller blades impeller blades then from impeller blades they are you know thrown into the diffuser ring so air is thrown into the diffuser ring diffuser ring and from diffuser ring it is collected in the an involute casing and it is eventually thrown out so from diffuser ring we go to the involute casing so in a nutshell this is how the air moves about so the first step it enters the eye the second step goes into the impeller blades third step is 
you know go is, is uh, led to the diffuser ring and fourth into the involute casing now what is going on in each of these i is where the suction takes place so this is the area of suction and it is axial okay now this is taken the air which is sucked in through the eye is taken into the impeller blades and in the in, in impeller blades due to rotation the energy of the or the velocity of the uh, air is increased so that increase in velocity will increase the momentum it increases the momentum it increases momentum and due to the momentum increase there is an increase in kinetic energy and some static pressure okay so all these things are increased due to the high energy rotation or the centrifugal energy which is being imparted by the rotation of this impeller now from this impeller they taken into the diffuser ring now diffuser ring is static okay so this impeller this is a moving part this is rotating okay this is a stationary part and so is this diffuser ring okay so in the diffuser ring what is happening all this kinetic energy all this momentum is broken down and this kinetic energy is now transformed into the pressure energy so the pressure increases in the diffuser ring it is not increasing in the impeller blades or the impeller impeller just imparts the energy which increases the velocity the momentum and the static pressure and all this high energy is taken into the diffuser where this high kinetic energy converts into high pressure energy okay now this high pressure energy air is now taken into this involute casing it gets collected over here and it is pushed out of this involute casing into the receiver okay so this is how a centrifugal compressor works let us say at the inlet part at the i you have pressure p1 which is almost equal to the atmospheric pressure the velocity with which it comes in at uh, it, it is v1 and the temperature is t1 at exit let us say it is p2 v2 and t2 all right so this is the inlet condition and this is the outlet condition so now let's understand in the next video after understanding this constructional detail that how the working or the how the velocity diagram of a centrifugal compressor blade are made so now let's talk about the velocity diagrams in the next video